to cancel. All right. Well, thank you for joining us for this Google Hangout. We are excited to have uh, Dr. Jin, uh, Sun Jin Park from uh, Harvard. Also, we have in the, uh, the screen there, we have uh, John Ferrier. He is a former student of ours at University of Central Arkansas. He's now uh, works there uh, with Dr. Park in the research lab. And so we're excited to have both of them uh, presenting today uh, the research. Background on our speaker today, uh, he's an associate researcher at the Parker Lab. Um, in C's at Harvard, that's the um, uh, uh, engineering uh, and applied sciences uh, uh, lab there at Harvard University, leading the optogenetic cardiac tissue engineering research projects. He received his bachelor's and master's degrees in mechanical engineering from Seoul uh, National University, mechanical engineering with double master's degree in electrical engineering from Stanford University. His PhD project was a development of microelectromechanical, otherwise known as MEMS, uh, based force feedback system for the study of sensory mechanotransduction in small nematodes under co supervision of Professor Beth Pruitt, also in mechanical engineering, and Professor uh, Miriam Goodman in the molecular and cellular, cellular physiology department. Uh, his postdoc research with Professor uh, Kit Parker at Harvard has further expanded the scope to tissue engineering, cardiology, and molecular and cellular biology. Uh, he's actively conducted collaborations uh, at Harvard and various other places, Boston Children's Hospital for uh, human cardiac disease models, uh, and also theoretical modeling um, and other bio-inspired designs. Uh, his recent work uh, with tissue-engineered soft robotics uh, for stingrays has been selected as the cover of Science Magazine, as well as uh, one of the popular science best inventions of the year 2016. Uh, you may have remembered seeing this. It was all in the news uh, uh, during the summer in June and featured in more than 100 news outlets such as the New York Times, the BBC, the Financial Times, and The Economist. So we're very excited to have uh, you guys giving a presentation today. Uh, so take it away, Dr. Park. Okay, thank you. Thank you for inviting me to present my research. Just a second. Can you hear? Yes, we can see that. Can you see uh, my presentation? Yes. Okay, so, okay, today, I'm, my name is Song Jin Park, and today I'm going to talk about the tissue engineering soft robotic ray. Do so, wanna, is, uh, uh, Dr. Park, do you want to make that full screen? We see the presentation in like edit, edit mode. Oh, yeah, make it full screen. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Oh. <laughs> so maybe. Yeah, and the alt tab to get, and then this one. Yeah, entire screen. Oh, is that the? I think that so. we did this one. Oh, hang on. Yeah, do do entire one. Hit share. No, no, go back, go back. Do that. Why? How to do it? This one. I think so. All right. Dr. Slane, does that work? Yes, beautiful. That looks great. So is it the um, conventional robots do you utilize the, the multi multiple joints and the motor, which is, which is made of the, the hard material such as the metal, metal and the ceramics. But, it, but this century, the, 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 the bio-inspired and biomimetic design make us start to think about the, the using the soft, start to think about the, using the soft, soft material to mimic the 
replicate the, the bio structure and complicate the bio locomotion. So it's in our lab, it's, it's, we start to think about the, instead of the soft robot, soft material, maybe we, we can start to using the living bio material as a building block of the soft robot, robotics. As you see that is a, as you see that is a, this human bodies, you can see that this is nice muscle tissue and the, the bone. So we, we can use this kind of the live material as a building material. And first of all, live material has a really appealing the advantage over the, the other synthetic material. For example, is a high, the special resolution and high the sensitivity and high the, den the, the energy density. So you see, we can also use the, the essential advance of the genetic engineering and tissue engineering allowed to the, modify the, this bio, living biomaterial. So ready to the, integrating this biomaterial into the, the unified the system. So in our lab is 2007 from the, about the 10 years ago, we start to use, we start to think about the biomaterial as a building block. So, for example, is we start to make the muscular thin film, and then is we culture some of the cardiac cardiac tissue on on the the elasmo substrate. That is uh, this this the muscular thin film work is crawling through the surface. And then we also developed the, some of the swimming, the biological mo motion. You can see that we call the jellyfish, which is a jellyfish, we mimic bio-inspired the jellyfish shape. You can see that this, is, this jellyfish is swim through the, the media. And other labs, for example, is MIT and the UIUC. And they developed the, the similar the bio biological machine, biological worker and biological swimmers. But all of them is unfortunately they we can electrical stimulation or optical stimulation is they the, make the this biological machine is to swim and work work but it's, uh, none of them is uh, demonstrating reliable control of the, these motions. So it's, for example, it's the, look at the biology, the animal. So you, see, you can see that it's, uh, this is this a video. And uh, you can see that- Dr. Park, uh, Dr. Park, hang on. Yep. We, we still only see your, uh, your title slide. We're not seeing any other uh, slides. Really? Yeah. So in your in your presentation, yeah. Oh, we we've been sitting on the title slide. We thought you were talking about and moving the mouse around to show that uh, little critter. So what should I do? Why? <laughs> uh, and then how this does it is, doesn't seem to be working. So. All right. Seem to be having trouble getting this thing to show correctly. Is it showing now? We see the uh, PowerPoint like you would be editing the slideshow. I can see right. the previous slides on the left. Does it change now? When I no, it is the same as it was. This is weird. Yeah, I don't understand. Maybe we start to screen show first and then use share. Well, we did that before and it didn't work. Maybe try again. Maybe we uh, select the, the other one. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Are you guys on a Mac? No. Huh. Usually it's the Mac that does that. Yeah. So. About this one? Maybe click that one instead of. All right. Let's see if this works for us. 
Okay, we see the edit screen, like you would edit the slideshow, or edit the slides. How about now? Nope, just the same as it was. This is really weird, okay. I'll share. We'll do the other one. Oh, I can see that this is there. Now, are y'all sharing the slideshow by going over uh, to the left-hand side of the screen with your mouse and click, clicking on screen share? Yes. Okay. But we might be choosing the wrong one. Okay, the, the wrong one. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. How about now? Dr. Slayton? Uh, we see us. We see uh, share your screen. We see us. Ah, interesting. All we right, see such a pretty cool camping background. Back to us. Back to this you. Is really, we, were, we weren't even clicking anything. That's why is it giving us problems? Hey, John, do you think the videos will play in the edit mode of the presentation? No. Oh, well, maybe. Yeah, I don't think so, but worth a shot. Was, we're going we're gonna to try something here. Okay. Um, we're experimentalists. So cool. it should show what. How about this? Okay, looks good. Click to the next slide. Yay! That works. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is, okay. So again, I was just. I just. I'll just start from where you were. Yeah. Like show some of the slides and the pictures. Yeah, the little thing's moving. You can see that. So it's basically in this slide I'm talking about um, the the biological machine, mm -hmm. such the, the we developed the muscular thin film worker and swimmers 2007, and then it's other group is MIT UIUC group doing a similar thing, and then it's a, but it's all of them is lack of the control of the locomotion and biological wow. motion. So, so it's just, and you can see that it's just, the animal has a really nice coordinate locomotion. You can see that it's a stingray. So, so it's a stingray has the neuromuscular system. So it's activate the neuron, activates, activate the muscle, sequen sequentially activate the mus muscle through the activate the neuronal, neuronal control system. So you can see that this is the, the neuron is propagated through, neuron activation is propagated through the anterior, fin, anterior part of the fin to the posterior part. You can see that it's according thing, thing, muscle also is, is propagated through the anterior to posterior. So it's a, we actually we think that is this is a, the stingray undulatory motion is really nice to replicate for us as a, the locomotion. So it's is, our aim is the, basically we create the tissue engine soft lobolin ray that is a swim because the using the undulatory motion. So basically we really focus on the we want to control this locomo locomotion of the stingray using the external, the apply the stimulus. So you see, we propose three aims. First aim is first aim is to talk about the mechanical structure of the stingray, and then second aim is to basically talk about the electrical component of the stingray, and aim three is to combine the mechanical and electrical components into the single system and then is we want to test it the performance of the stingray. So it's a start about start with the M1. So it's an M1 is a bio inspired the mechanical the bio inspired design of the mechanical component of the tissue engine ray. So as you see that this is the this this is the stingray the cross sectional the fin 
structure. You can see that this is the muscle. There is a two muscle layer, and then it has the bone between the muscle. Mm -hmm. And then we, and also you can see that it's a nice three-dimensional shape of the fin structure. So it's a, we bio-inspired this the nice structure of the stingray, and then we we made a, we designed a, four different layers. The first one layer is the elasmo body, and second layer is the gold skeleton. Third layer is this kind of interstellar elasmo, and then last one is the muscle. You can see that it's, we have only one muscle. Stingray has two muscles. But because we want to minimize the complexity of the design, so it's, we want to use the only one muscle. And then it's, we have to compensate the second layer of the muscle. So it's, we, we put the gold skeleton and three elastomer body, three structure, three dimensional structure of the elastomer body. So basically it's this muscle is when this muscle is, the single muscle is a contract, single layer of the muscle is contract. And then it's when they relax, and then it's when they contract the, this elastic body and the gold skeleton is store the elastic energy. And then it's when muscle is relax, and then this energy is released, and then recoil back to the original position. And then it's most important thing is the three dimensional body of the stingray because you can see that it's this animal the stingray, the diffraction, the pattern. You can see that it's a stingray. The stingray has the thickness of the body is decreased when, when from the, the anterior to posterior. And because of that is that the amplitude of the diffraction is, is increased. So if we want to mimic this kind of the structure, replicate the, this structure of the stingray. And basically we made the, the three dimensional of the PDMS body. So you can see that this, this is cross sectional of the view. This is the micro CT image of the, our stingray. You can see that this, it has the nice gold skeleton structure inside and then You can see that this is the stingray structure is the thicker in the anterior body and thicker is the posterior body. And the last one is the muscle layer. So you, see you can redesign the stingray is 10 times smaller than the animal stingray. And then it's, but it's, we want to keep the same orientation of the muscle layer. You can see muscle layer and skeleton. You can see that this is this is the bone of the stingray, and then you can see that is a pink layer is in pink indicate the, the the tissue muscle muscle tissue, and then it's also the our stingray has the the gold skeleton same direction of the animal stingray, and then we also is our muscle layer is the same direction of the, the, the stingray muscle orientation. So we basically, we mimic the, we replicate the muscular skeletal structure of the animal stingray at the meso and micro scale. So we developed the seven days of fabrication process. So every day, I want to optimize the, this structure. So you see, every, every week we have the same process until the fully optimized uh, this fabrication process. So it's basically first day, second day, so we, we made the P PDMS, the elasmo, PDMS is elasmo, PDMS is stingray body and embed the gold, gold structure. You can see that is we put the dextran solution on the three dimensional of the Titan mold. And then we put the two PDMS layer. And then after that, we put the titan, titanium gold, the evaporate the layer. So it's make the, the gold skeleton. 
And then after that, we put the, some of the PBMS layer because this layer is good for the cell attachments. And then it's after that, we laser cutting the, we define the signal shape. And then it's, we put the fibonectin pattern on the, the PDMS layer. So it's, fibonectin is a kind of a glue to stick to the t cardiomyocyte, cardiac tissue on the PDMS. And then while we are preparing the signal bodies, we also is a harvest the, the cardiac cell from the red. And then is we seed the cardiac cell on top of the signal structure. And then after that, we put the lentivirus to express license to ion channel on the cell. Just wait four days. And then it's stingy, we can release the stingy from the, the titanium mold. And then you, see, you can see that it's a stingy, we conduct the stingy experiments day four of the, the harvest. So it's the principle of the, so principle operation, principle of the operation is very simple. So for example, for you can see that is optical stimulation is directly the anterior body of the stingy, and then is this one is activate the the muscle, small portion of the muscle, and then is this activation wave and propagate through the serpentine pattern of the stingy muscle layer, and then this activation induces the sequential muscle contraction. And this is leading to the undulatory locomotion and make the stingays swim forward. So it's a, I, I briefly introduced optogenetics techniques. So it's optogenetics is developed for the many is a neuro, neuro, popular in the neuroscience these days. And then basically is to the using the light is to control the the cell activity. So it's for example, it's a new, in neuroscience they want to stimulate the light on the neuron, and then is they want to investigate the the they want to activate the activate the neuronal activity. So it's for us to we think the optogenesis is really great the tool for us to control the stingy because opt optical stimulation is we can apply remotely. So, so you can see that it's, so you can see that it's a, we basically we transfer the, this channel lolopsin onto the cardiac cell. Is this is licensed to ion channel. So it's a light, it's a hit the, this licensed ion channel and then induce the conformational change of the, this licensed ion channel. And then it's allowed the cat ion channel into the cell and then induce the it's kind of lead to activation of the, the cell. So it's, it's, we developed the, con, we designed the construct, construct vector, vector, vector of the, the Lentivirus. Lentivirus. You can see that it's especially we use the cardiac specific promoter CTNT, and then it's allowed to the express expression of the channel loss in, into the cardiac cell. And then you can see that is here is the cardiac cell is 80 to 90 percent of the cardiac cell expressing the channel lolopsin. So it's, and then it's, we do the patch camp experiments, basically measure the, the membrane current and the membrane, current, membrane potential. And you can see that this is light, this is blue light induced the opening of the channel. So they, you can see that this is the large, the light sensitive ion channel current. And then is, and then we apply the the various frequency pulse, light pulse. You can see that it's, there's an action potential of the the light induced 
induce the action potential of the cell. So which is demonstrating we can control the membrane potential at the single cell level. I will introduce some of the basic cardiomyocyte the information. So, so we choose the cardiomyocyte for the for the, the because the cardiomyocyte has interesting the physiological property of the of the interesting physiological property. You can see that is the, the membrane potential, the action potential the activate the cardiac cell. You can see that it's calcium ion into the, the cell, and then that induce the, the, the induce the calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So, and then it's this kind of the free calcium ions combined into the, the active myosin system. So it's, that is induced the conformation change of the system. So it's that basically contraction of the cell. And also it's another interesting part of the this cardiomyocyte is you can see that this is cell is connect, connected each other with the inter the connected each other is a gap junction. So it's allow the propagation of the action potential. You can see that is if I stimulate the one cell and then it's this activation wave is propagates through the this gap junction to to the next cell. So it's a, so we designed the muscle 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 layer. You can see that is the the, using the calcium imaging, we demonstrating how ac action potential propagates through the, the muscle. You can see that it's a light pulse, the direct, the light stimulation is activate the small portion of the cell in uh, anterior body of the, uh, anterior part of the thing. And then it's this kind of the activation propagates through the, this, on, the serpentine pattern of the muscle layer. And then, and so it's, a, and then you can see that it's a, there's a two, we call that that is a, the muscle circuit. We call the serpentine muscle circuit. And then you can see that there is a two muscle circuit on the stingy body. And so this is a two muscle, circuit is actually controlled by the in independently. Mm. You can see that if we apply the asynchronous pacing, asynchronous stimulus, and then you can see that it's 1.5, 1 hertz, 1.1 1 hertz, and 3 hertz. So it's, they actually propagate independently. And so it's the, we optimize the density of the serpentine muscle pattern. So you can see that it's, um, without serpentine pattern, it's, this propagation is too fast to generate the undulatory motion of the thing name. But it's, if we, increase the density of the serpentine pattern, you can see that is the, because the pattern is itself is really narrow. That's why it's increased the, the standard deviation of the error. So it's a, we have to choose, we have to choose the enough, the, the activation time to induce the, the undulatory motion and also, is we have to reduce the the standard deviation of the error because the, if we increase the standard deviation error, then they gonna the two muscle layer is kind of the asynchronous activated, so is they induce the undesirable turning. So is we choose the 
actually our choice is in intermediate serpentine pattern. You, you can see that in the middle of the, the slide. And then we put the stingnail, combine the muscle layer into the, our elastomer body, and then we put into the physiological solution. And then we apply the optical stimulation on the stingnail. You can see that is the why the action potential propagates through the film, the induced the sequential, that is induced the sequential activation of the muscle and then induce the undulatory motion. And then you can see that this is, this is calcium activity. And then this is speed of the stingray motion. And calcium is activated through the fin. And when the calcium activation wave arrives the 0.5 body length, which is the posterior body of the stingray, then is the, the, the maximum speed thing I display the maximum speed of, speed of lo locomotion. So it's a, actually we have we have to there is a many the obstacle to overcome to make the signals move forward. For example, is the our signal the this is. A, really early version of the stingray. And this stingray is move, doesn't move forward even if they, the, ac the action potential propagate through the fin. Because of the, because we think that is, we, the we find out the solution is to, we have to replicate the, the, the diffraction pattern of the stingray. If we match the, our stingray, the diffraction pattern with the cine, then you can see that this cine motion is moved forward, which tell us the, the this kind of asymmetrical the deformation pattern is really important to generate the, the forward motion. And we also is compare our undulatory locomotion with the percentile gait, which is usually you can find the percentile gait in the jellyfish. Mm -hmm. So we use the optical fiber is to basically induce the undulatory gate in, in the top layer of top video. And then is we apply the electrical global stimulation and then is induce a global contraction of the, the cell. So it's a, that is induce the percentile gate. So you can see that the undulat undulatory gate is a two times faster than the percentile gate. So it's a, we conclude that is our coordinate the locomotion is really beneficial for the, the this soft robotic signal. And then we want to compare the our signal performance with the the animal signal. So first one is the we want to see that this is the the free the free the motion free the motion that is a stingray generate two stingray generate you can see that this is our engineer is stingray the animals you can see that is a animal stingray you can see that is the they generate the blue and red kind of alternate alternation of the plus and minus of the vertically so it's that is undulatory, that is a hallmark of, of the undulatory motion. And then our stingray also generates a similar pattern of the, the, the vertically. You can see that it's red is followed by the blue and blue is followed by the red, which is indicate our stingray is actually generate the, the undulatory locomotion. And we also is compare the swimming speed of the stingray, but it's our stingray is 10 times smaller than the animal stingray, as you can, as you know that. So it's animal stingray actually the operating into the turbulence region because the 10 times the larger, 
but it's our senior is in the lamina region. So that's why it's, it's not unfair. It's not fair to compare the both CNA directly. So instead of that, we use the the scale law. So Reynolds number and swimming number. So it's this Nature Physics paper 2014 is showing demonstrating scale scale law. The so all of the swimming the animal is actually the swimming performance below the, this kind of the, the, the biological swimming loop line. So it's, which tell me is that this biological swimming loop line is the, the sub, like a subject, the, all, the fair, fair the guideline to compare the stingray, our stingray with the, the animal solution. So, we figuring out that is the lava jiggler fish is a similar swimming number, which is swimming number is capture the input kinematics of the, the animal, the swimming performance. And then we compared our the stingray with the lava jiggler fish. You can see that. And then the, we compare the Reynolds number, generate the that stingray, our stingray and the the uh, lava jiva fish generate. You can see that our stingray is about 75, uh, Reynolds number is 75, and then it's lava jiva fish around 113, is, which is uh, about 60% uh, of the performance. Our stingray is 60% of the sting performance of compared with the uh, lava jiva fish. So it's, it's, this is a surprise result for us, which is the, this is first version of the swimming stingray. So it's, we will continue to improve the, this performance, in, improve the, optimize the structure and the, the, the muscle circuit. So it's, this is a kind of final, so it's a final characterization of the thing A. So it's a lot. We want to, interesting, the, how long they survive in the solution. So you see, we put the signal into the cell, it, the media, and then see how long they, they maintain the speed. You can see that it's about um, six days of the release. They sting, sting is still 80% of the swimming speed in the initial swimming speed. But it's about the seven days, eight days, you can see that this thing is slow down the speed. So it's uh, right now is uh, our swimming speed is lifespan is about six days. So it's uh, to get the final aim, like uh, the testing, the performance and the navigation of the thing into the obstacle course. So we, we use the different frequency to measure the swimming speed. You can see that it's the, about 1.5 hertz to 2 hertz maximized swimming speed, and then about 1 hertz to 3 hertz they minimize the swimming speed. So it's, so it's basically this one tell us that we can control the swimming speed of the signal. And then is we want to basically we want to make the signal turn. So it's the, our idea is to, because we have the two muscle circuit on the signal. So it's we stimulate the different frequency of the different frequency of the, the light light pulse. And then is the asynchronous the pacing induced the I think we can make make the signal is turned. So for example, is if we apply the left left fin is a one hertz, which is slower than 1.5 hertz, which we apply the 1.5 hertz on the right fin, you can see that this is there is a turn the clock counterclockwise. The same thing we apply the opposite like a left is 1.5 hertz and right is one hertz, the signal is turn the clockwise. So it's, uh, we demonstrate that is uh, the asynchronous pacing is induced uh, the, 
the direct direction turning of the sting name. So it's a, this is the final slide, final the characterization of the, the performance of the sting name. You can see that is we put the obstacle course, we made the obstacle course on the the chamber, and we put the sting name on the and then on the on the chamber, and then is we apply the the asynchronous pacing and synchronous pacing on the stingray, and then make them is swim through the obstacle course. You can see that this is the optical stimulation. Is this is twenty times faster than the first movie. You can see that this stingray is moving through the obstacle course of the stingray. Stingray swim through the obstacle course. You can see that. So it's summary of the my slide. So it's, it's we demonstrated combined all of the genetic technique and tissue engineering technique, microfabrication technique. We combine all of the technique into the small stingray system. We demonstrating the self 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 propel the swim swimming stingray, and then is we control the this locomotion by the optical stimulation. And then this is study is the first step, basically because it, the, we have to improve the several thing to towards to the biological robot. So you can see that this is one of the application of the, this, is, this kind of technique we can use the develop to, to the artificial organ. And then is we ultimately we want to develop the, some of the artificial autonomous creature. For example, is if we really want to make this, this thing into the biological robot, we have to put the, some of the processing power inside the stingray. So this is, we're going to integrate some of the biological circuitry inside the stingray, or we're going to integrate some of the electrical circuit inside the stingray, the art synthetic body. So this is make the stingray processing multiple stimulus and generate the desired response. Ultimately, we want to make the, this is kind of the biological system to generate the, some of the complex motion something like the adaptation or avoidance the behavior. So it's just, we, I want to thank you, the, our disease biophysics group. And then is, we also is thank you, the Stanford University Cardiosaurus Lab. And also we work with the Mahadevan group and George Lauder. And we want to thank you the international collaboration with the Savan University. So this is why not. So is any question? Let's thank our speaker. Okay, well thank you very much. That's uh, fascinating. Uh, do we have any speakers from the audience, Michael? Um, have you all got any, uh, have you all got any research on how to uh, improve the survival rate of these uh, of the muscle tissue you got from I mean, the cardio tissue you get from the the mice? How does it improve the lifespan? We talk about so it's just, we have to we have the several improve the lifespan of the, this biological tissue. Right now, it's, we, we publish it this century is about, we, we use the, some of the gelatin or hydrogel, we can improve the, the, the biological tissue to the, about one month. So it's, we can, probably we can easily, easily, easily improve the, the lifespan of the, this machine about the month, but is it in the, maybe it's a year or 10 years, something like the survive the, the biological robot, 
then we need to to some of the some of the micro fluid embedded some of the 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 biological system. So it's, that is maybe is we can improve the year or ten years lifespan. Okay, so we're so the plan is to just uh, art, uh, make the artificial support systems to become an autonomous uh, artificial creature. Yeah. My microfluidic system maybe into the cell and then you provide the enough media and or enough oxygen or micro environment so it's proper micro environment so that is the key is to improve the systems so uh your model is scaled down version of the of the original stingray. So how do you take into account the weight to surface area which has changed, that ratio? You know, when you do the scaling, mm -hmm. how do you take the scaling factor into account? So it's, it's, it's so much more surface area to the weight now with a smaller right. size object. Right, right. But you say the we use the swimming number to capture the kinematics of the swimmer, and then we use the Leonard number is to capture the swimming speed. So it's these two number. We plot the we plot the, all of the swimming performance of the about a thousand animals, and then we plot that in the two domain like a swimming number and the Leonard's number. We found out that is it, uh, some of the, the, the line, like the loop line, it's line with all of the, the swimming performance below that loop line. So we think that is that is the, you know, the maximum speed, the speed of the, the, all of the biological swimmers. And then it's after that we compare the, our swimming speed with the other the biological swimmers. That's what we do, did. So it's a, so it's a, we doesn't count on the, 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 what is that, the surface tension, but it's an animal maybe optimized that, that is the surface tension versus the weight, I think. Thank you. Uh, I've, I've got a question. Um, when, when you mentioned that you had uh, optimized the designs, were those done on a, a computational, um, like a full physics type engine to account for the elastomer and the, uh, the gold skeleton, or was it more of a trial and error, try a bunch of different designs and then kind of see which one worked best, and then that formed your uh, basis for the next iteration? So it's just something like that. So it's a we, we, we first of all we designed the several signal body shape, and then it's a, we choose the best one out of that. And then after that is we have to optimize some of the thickness of the skeletal, skeletal structure and the PDMS body, and we found the the optimal value of the structure thickness. That's wow. what we did. That's so a lot it's, of it. it's basically it's about it's hundred time, more than hundred times your iteration to get the make the swim thing is swim to the the physiological solution. Uh, uh, another question: um, the muscles that are in the stingray are all of them. Uh, light sensitive, or only the muscles that are near the front that you want to start the so right now. Is, right, so right now it's all of the muscles light sensitive okay. because, but it's the but it's our, that's why it's, uh, we use the optical fiber to localize the stimulation area. Okay, but is it the, in the future? It's definitely you have to the. Uh, the make the thing the small portion of the cell is light sensitive because that is easier because we can the stimulate like um 
really largest like right now is we stimulate optical fiber but instead of that if we the make the pattern of the the stimulate the transfected area then is we if we localize the transfected area then is uh, so we can use the any pet, any light source to right. shine in light. or like a disco we can shine in like any right. any location then we make the stinger is turn or move so those those videos where if you could see the light flash that was just to get them to go straight right but the obstacle course those little wires go into the stingray and they alternately flash the light different rates to cause the right. turn. So, That's right. Cool. That is beautiful. Right. So we That's use cool. the asynchronous pacing and synchronous pacing and then make the stingray is turn. So so it's a it's that is a really difficult the text that is my professor gave me, but is it the key? What we found out that is, is we turn out, from the experiment we found out that is our the engineering muscle is really robust. So it's maybe we can maybe design the different shape of the animal in the future. We can maybe that is really promising result for us to design the another level of the artificial animal. So, so let, me, let, me, let me see if I understood you correctly. You could make multiple muscle layers if you had different light sensitivity, so different frequency sensitivity on the light? So right now, it's, our technique is only one single layer. Right. But it's, uh, our group is also is the the integrating some of the biological manufacturing techniques of, such as the 3D printing technique. And then we can make the multiple layer of the, the muscle. And then also we can transfect the different light, the, like a different, the frequency of the, pay, the wavelengths of light. For example, some of the lo location is we can activate the by late, red light. We can activate the some of the lotion is green light or blue light. So we can make the, we can generate the complex motion of the, the maybe new artificial animal. So that's what we're trying to do right now, right? Um, have, you, uh, have you thought about having uh, the, two, the two muscle systems sensitive, sensitive to one frequency of light on one side and uh, another frequency on the other side? In order to to um, uh, just to where it will be sensitive more on one side to the other, so you would have to put the uh, two two uh, two uh, light system on there. So you said maybe if we localize the transfection area, for example, is we can only a small portion of the cell is contained by this light sensitive ion channel. And then, some of the, for example, one of the the fins has the the blue light sensitive, and the other fin is green light sensitive. Then is we can we use the two light blue and red light on on the top. Then is that is enough to to control the locomotion of the stingray. But it's in when our system right now is only we have the blue light sensitive channel. Because we really, we, in the beginning, we designed the two different light sensitive the channel. We want to transfect it, the two different light channel, but it's the, we, this is the first try, so it's the, we trying to minimize the complexity of the, the manufacturing. So it's the, we used only one, one color light sensitive channel. So it's, but it's, that's why it's, we use the optical fiber. So it's, oh, that okay. is enough to the, Independently control the muscle, so that's we we did that. that. That's pretty remarkable for the first try. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's beautiful, definitely. So it's a really like a promising result for us so yeah. to work to the develop the any more advanced uh, biological artificial robot. Um, I, I I never thought of uh, would have thought of. Uh, 
uh, controlling muscles through light. I didn't even know there was a genetic, uh, a, a, there was even genetics to where muscle would respond to light. It's very interesting. So right. And in the future, is another interesting thing is right now is we use the optical light-sensitive ion channel, but is in the future we going to use the mechanosensitive ion channel. Also, we going to in include the chemical activated ion channel in the future in this wow. setup. So it's that that is really interesting. Maybe we can generate the, some of the interesting complex behavior like a avoidance circuitry. We can maybe we can make it. So it's a, that's another, the, another it, still this is a fundamental study, but it's, it's, we will find the, some of the nice application for that, right? Cool, that, that's remarkable, that's exciting. So will that work continue there in that lab with Dr. Park? Is that what his vision is to continue to work on this? To move right. so the move and the chemical sensing? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we, we will do that. So basically, our purpose is more towards to the developing development of the artificial organ. Yeah. Maybe that is another cool application for of this technique. Cool. Yeah. So, so what does John do there? <laughs> what does John <laughs> do for you? Hey, what do I do for you? <laughs> <laughs> So is we, we some of them is we going to maybe we can new paper is coming out soon maybe then maybe maybe we can use his technique so he developed some of the software to analyze this muscular thin film machine so it's assay so we're going to use that technique to evaluate the, some of the drug response or disease model or something like that. So it's, we're going to publish it soon. So it's, that oh. is another big thing for us. And then. <laughs> All right, I'll talk. Hello. 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 Look, if, if I'm going to talk to you guys, I need to do this right. Hold on. Uh. <laughs> Yay! Sure, go on there. Come on, ask me a shirt on there. <laughs> 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 nice, nice show. So, so yeah, so tell us a little bit about what was the transition like coming from UCA to uh, working there uh, over your first like you did you did two RUs at the lab and now you're there full time. So so what's that been like? Um, it felt like having to be Usain Bolt dropping out of a helicopter. <laughs> Because I had to hit the ground running. Like as soon as I got here, they're like, "Do this, this, and this, and this," and I'm like, "Uh, all right, I'll try." <laughs> so it's uh, it's different in that sense. But I think the thing that was uh, really humbling about it was, um, you know, I come from UCA and then come up to Harvard, and you think, "Okay, this is going to be rough, right?" But then you find out that like, it doesn't really matter. Like, you know. A lot of these people, they don't know a lot of things that I know, and vice versa, they know a lot of things that I don't know, so we all end up being able to help each other in different ways. So I think that was really nice coming out here. I was really prepared for it, I think. Good. Uh, I got a question. Um, did, you, did, you, uh, did, you face a, did you face a lot of people saying, oh, he's from Arkansas, he's not going to go anywhere? Uh, I mean, not well, from not Indiana. Indiana. <laughs> yeah. Well, I went to, to, he went to UCA. Went to UCA. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not really, no. Um, there's a lot of people that, you know, never heard of. Yeah, I've met people here who thought Arkansas was a city in Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole state, right? So, um, no, not really. And, you know, honestly... The one thing I've learned is it really doesn't matter where, where you come from because, I mean, I've had some of the smartest people like uh, uh, techs or undergrads working in my lab, 
have been from the local community college, right? Who do a wonderful job when they help out. Um, and then some of the ones I've had the most trouble with have been from Harvard, you know, so, but in, we've also had really, really good ones from Harvard. So you, you don't, you don't ever, I don't think it's fair to say that one side is going to be better than the other because you really don't know until you work with the person. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's completely homogenous with, uh, uh, the way people perform here. There's no, uh, there's no, these, this people from this school are bad and these ones are good. It's just the person. <laughs> So I think that was pretty interesting. So because of that, I think no one's ever been kind of like, oh, he's from Arkansas, so he won't, he won't do well. Uh, I haven't experienced that, no. Oh, I'm glad. So John, yeah. John, this is Dr. Maida. Who? Dr. Maida. I think I heard of you once. <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm in Boston area, you think I may be able to come and visit you? See of course. Of I'm course, going to be next week then. You yes, just call me out coming next week then. <laughs> I'll yeah. give you a call. Right. I'd love to see your lab. Of course. All right. I can even introduce you to this guy over here. <laughs> sure, sure. sure. Bye. 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 So, so, John, one last question. Uh, we've got some new SPS folks here that might not all remember you. What advice would you give to current SPS members that you now looking back are like, you know, I wish if I could go back, I would tell myself this. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's a tough one. Yeah. You know, I, I've seen a lot of people who were smart in SPS and would just give up some some way along the line. So I, I would say um, don't, right? Because tough things always get hard, but just because you think you might not be able to do it doesn't mean that you can't. Um, it always makes me upset when I see people that I know who, who easily could have uh, uh, done really well and just decided not to because of their own uh, personal beliefs. But I think the best way I can put it is I went to a talk um, a few months ago and, you know, every, most people here are bio or biochem backgrounds. Um, so when I went to this talk, that's what most of the people there were. And the talker was uh, a physicist, right? And I was talking to him afterwards. Um, I said, uh, yeah, I'm not one of these PhDs here, right? I just have an undergrad in physics. And he says, don't ever say that because you need to keep in mind that physics is really hard. Therefore, compared to all of them, we're superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, the way I took it was, you know, uh, you are in physics. So I think that means that you have something to bring to the table. So don't, uh, uh, don't think that you can't keep trying, you know, um, Dr. Slayton can tell you that when I when I applied for REUs, I applied to a lot of them, uh, yeah. and I only got into one. So, uh, but it worked out, right? Because all you need is one. You get into one place and show them that you can work hard, uh, don't slack, and uh, it'll probably pay off. I mean, kind of did for me, I guess. It's kind of nice working here sometimes. Yeah, I'll attest to that. John had a spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Wait. Yeah. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't see me. It's Dr. Oh, the in the background. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Can you, can you tell them how many I had on my spreadsheet? There were a lot. It was nice because you could tell if you'd written your recommendation letter. So yeah. you check it out. Yeah, I made a spreadsheet. Very organized. It showed all the parallels on the different programs, so that way you could replicate uh, some letters, or uh, I could replicate essays I have to write. That was kind of nice, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was way too many, though. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that many. <laughs> May have caused people some heartache that, that summer. <laughs> Nancy, do you want to say anything? Are you got John on the line? Hey, Sharon, how are 
<laughs> I'm good. How are you? I think I'm all right. Yeah. She's in the light up there. It's oh, she's in the light. Hiding yeah. in the light in the back of the room. I just heard it's so good to see you, though. And I'm so excited. <laughs> you too. <laughs> I've got a beard now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, is there anything you need to bring from Conway up to you that you can't get there? Uh, some mean pig, yeah. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, he doesn't. Need, he just needs to come by himself and see me. I'll do that. That'll be fun. Do we have any more questions for our audience, or, or sorry, our speakers here? This has been fantastic. Uh, do you do you have uh, do you have uh, uh, a lot of uh, published papers? Where I could get like a link to them or something. So if you go back and you look at the, uh, the Facebook post, uh, within the comments, I posted the information that uh, Dr. Park sent me. And so there are some things there. And you can also link directly to the paper that he's talking about. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah, you can get it. There. Well, let's thank our speakers one more time. This is great. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. You've earned a beer. Would you see those? Oh. <laughs> it's, like it's my turn now. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Thank you again. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.